right afternoon everyone now this is just a technique to help you um, with your books you can make your own paper or fabric should I say out of paper I have shown you this technique before a couple of times I think but I'm just going to share it again because I can't find the videos well they're there somewhere you need a plastic bag so anything plastic bin liner will do just the front cover at the front section of the paper tissue and then I'm going to use some Chinese paper, tissue paper, but you can use any tissue. Sorry, just excuse me. You can do it without any, without using it and it'll be fine, but I want to be able to put stuff on the back of it when it's done. So I'm just using this uh, Chinese paper, like that. Whoops, come here you two, where have you gone? I've just thrown away my pictures. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is pop that onto there and I'm using PVA glue. Now I'm going to wet my brush, first of all, and it's just mucky water, but I'm not bothered about that because you're not going to see it. And I'm going to do it big enough. So if you're using tissue paper, not tissue paper, um, yeah, you know, the when I say tissue paper, here in the UK, that's toilet paper. But you don't want that because that won't hold. You just want tissue, like you wrap a present in. Okay, and then pull that back, flatten that down, like that. Now, I will have to um, peel it off. I'm going to start adding my glue and just paint over it now we will have to come back to see how this is getting on oops make sure you've got it all on properly nice layer of glue I've got a couple of creases in mine but it doesn't matter I'm not fussed at all. All adds to the character of the paper. So like I say, you just do it with a layer of glue. Like that. You don't want to rub too much because you, uh, you want to make sure you've got it all and you don't rip it. Now you do have to let that dry. So that's going to take a while. Now I'm going to do a couple more. Uh, we have to come back because you need to do the underneath. In fact, I'm going to do it without wetting it. And just glue it straight away. And see what happens. I haven't done this for a while. So we're just gluing it down at the moment. I mean, putting we're just spreading glue all over it, just big enough for the paper. You don't need to go mad. Okay, so I'm taking the next piece, which is a darker one, like that. Now, just going to spread that. Sorry. I was just making it was flat. Pop on the glue on top. And when it dries, you end up, uh, it's like fabric. Instead of it being paper, it just ends up feeling like a fabric. And it's flexible, you can cut it, you can sew on it. And I would just do yourself some sample bits because you don't need much when you're uh, creating these books. Like that, see? And that will, it's double strength then. 
I'm just going to try and flatten that out. Pull it like that. Here's my next one. And that should be enough for that one. It dries clear. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's that one. And I just want to do, oops, one more. Pop a bag underneath each of these and then let them dry. But like I say, you don't need to put a backing on them. I'm doing it because I want them a little bit thicker. That's all. So, like I say, we're just going to do one more. They don't take long to dry, so I will be back to sort it out. And they're great to cut up and use in your journal. Right, I'm just going to show what it's like just to do that without the backing paper. I mean, I could keep it on what's already there, but I don't want that. So I'm going to take this section off as well. And we'll just have that on its own. So you've got to be quick. Really quick. Okay, so we've got a layer of the um, glue over that and the layer underneath. Right, so that's that done. Now I should be able to just dry one of them off a little bit just to show you. So we'll take that off there. Move that. Now without this paper backing, of course it's going to be more opaque. That's more or less dry. Okay. I think that's enough. So what you do then is <coughs> you simply get your scissors and peel it off the back, which I'm actually ooh, just going to turn that over. Yeah, I'm going to turn that over for a minute and pop that on that side and we're just, yeah, that's still wet. So we need to dry that off. I think that might be enough and like I said yeah I'm gonna take that off and right away you've got this fabric that used to be paper and you can use this to stitch on um, or whatever you want to do with it I'm going to let the others dry naturally. I just wanted to share this with you so you can see what it was like. I'm going to see if my uh, scissors 
my pinking shears will cut this. Let's try this. I'm not sure with it being... Yeah, it just feels like fabric now. Oh yes, look at that. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is just to cut us uh, round the edge. Because that'll look good when I sew it onto my project. I think I'm going to use some of this, you see. Now, if you get, we do sell the napkins, all of these. But what I could do is cut that out, or this one, or this one, and just start putting them onto my project. Just easing the needle through, because uh, I don't want it to split it. I don't think it will, because it's now, it's glued. You know, it's glued paper. That's more like fabric now. So as quick as I've just made this, you can do the same. You know, get a black bin bag, lap a load of... Um, uh, lop a load of glue on it. And don't do it too thick, you don't need it. And then put your papers on it. Glue on top of that, let it dry, and hey presto, you've made your own paper. And it's just as good as anything else. If you haven't got floral fabrics or anything like that, look, that's really nice there. I was just showing you a different technique to find and make your own fabric um, out of the things you like. It does feel like rubber, but it's still enough uh, that it's flexible that you can play around with it. I'm going to be putting an edging on here so I'm not bothered about the stitching being big. You won't see it when I've done it. But yeah, that's brought a little bit more colour to my project. So when I go to put my little trimmings on or whatever it is I'm going to be doing, I can uh, add that there. And then I can put some cording along the edge there. Just whatever you want to do. And it's fun. It really is fun. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of these, a little flower out. I'll just cut this one out. So look for napkins that have things on that you can cut out and use. See like that there? I might want to put them one here. That way you can see which is right way around. Fee, come on. So I'm just going to couch that onto there. Okay. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bead and let's have a little pearl, I think. So you can find a tiny one. That'll do. That'll do. That one. No, that'll do. I'm not even sure my needle will go through it. I don't think it will. But hey ho. So I'm going to take my little spike, put my bead to one side, put that to one side. Don't go flying away, mate. Go there. So what I'm going to do is just to... Oops, that bead's going to go flying. Like that. Pop my bead on. Yeah, everybody thinks you need to use um, needle and thread all the time. No, you do what you like. Go back through there take it back to the back pull two pieces see like that then all i'm going to do is to twist and flatten because this is going to be padded you won't find or see that you won't feel it you won't see it Chop that off, chop that off. Now, when they put the hot glue gun on, I just couch that down with the glue, like that. And look, I made a little flower, like that. 
and I can do another one. <laughs> Just something different. I'll put a butterfly on, I think. Just going to put this little butterfly on. And you just cut it up and keep playing around until you've got everything on your book that you want. And there's lots of ways of attaching hot glue, needle and thread, glue itself, you know, PVA glue, fabric glue, wires, pins, lots and lots of ways of popping on. Let's have a look, see where we want to put this. I might just want to stick that there. So what I'm going to do is take my needle and thread. I'm going to, I can see what I've done through there. So do that. I don't want to pull it tight. I pulled it off now, see. Sometimes I only wrap it around the end if there's like little loose threads on it. Right, so... I'm going to go up through the butterfly on one side of the wing. Hopefully it will, it'll stay there. Go down the other side. I've got a little butterfly on there that's uh, 3D. Cute. And put a little pearl in there. A little bling something. So they're just great ways of doing different things. Um, just wanted to say more see it's completely dry you can squash it up wrinkle it doesn't matter it's not going to rip because it's more like a rubbery uh, fabric now but thin flexible and you can do all sorts with it you know so yeah They're great. Let me just see if the others have dried yet. I'll just dry this one off for you. Like I will be coming back to do another tutorial on that. Um, but I just want to make sure that this is done. So I'm just going to take that off of there. Turn that over. Like that. Pop that on the back. That's almost dry. Okay. Again, yeah, that's fine. That's done. Well, you can do so many of these, and then do a patchwork from all of them. You know what I mean? Not just use the odd bit in your patchwork book. Make a patchwork book. There we go, and there you go, it's flexible, screw it up, so give it that aged look, you can colour over it, you can paint on it, you can sew it, you can do whatever you want to do, and I think that's a great way of um, getting fabrics for you, I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll uh, speak to you all soon. Bye bye for now.